Hey guys, Mike here. Um, you know, I'm going to do some couple videos on welding. Um, I, I searched around YouTube a little bit, and you know, there's some pretty good videos on oxyacetylene welding. What there isn't, though, are videos that show mistakes. And so instead of trying to teach welding, uh, which is pretty overdone, I mean, you can you can learn that right on YouTube. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through some mistakes, I, and I, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna we're gonna make a ton of mistakes. We're gonna use um, too much oxygen. We're gonna see what happens. Use too much acetylene. We're gonna see what happens. Um, too much heat. Not enough. Um, wrong size fill rod. We're, we're just gonna make some mistakes and see what we can't come up with to make you feel more comfortable. The one thing about oxyacetylene welding is it scares people. Um, you know building airplanes it just seems like people want to build aluminum these days I, there's a fear that that this welding is something that can't be done by average people and that, that is that is a serious mistake okay i i've welded you know i'm fortunate because i was welding when i was fairly young um but make no mistake about it if you have just as much ability to weld one airplane than you do the guy that, that's done a dozen, okay? His welds might look a little better, okay? But that's not that big of a deal. We just want to make sure it's welded correctly, okay? So what you're staring at here is a 1946 J3 Cub. This is inch and a quarter, uh, 049 tubing. This finger strap here is 063, okay? There's a bushing here. Now imagine, the guy that welded this in 1946, he was a professional. He welded this Monday through Friday, probably Saturday. And there's sort of this mystique about, you know, that, that, that those guys were really good, and, 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 and they were, and, and they definitely were, but they did make mistakes. It's okay. You're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes. Okay? Now this guy did it every day, and his welds look pretty darn nice okay I cleaned this up with a wire wheel so just to kind of show you if you can hopefully get a view of the camera um, what that might look like from the factory um, you know gosh I don't know I mean I'm a plumber okay I don't weld every day you know you weld once in a while I've done my fair share of fuselages let me tell you um, in every one of them there's mistakes I'm okay with that. You need to come to the realization that you're going to make those mistakes, okay? And and let's look at the professional that did this day in and day out, okay? If you look here, that's a hole, okay? Very, you know, poor penetration on that bushing, okay? As you move around, that poor penetration, you can see that was poor penetration, okay? Um, you can see in this weld that, you know, there's a section here that is just... It's beautiful. I mean, my God, that three-quarter inch long, it's just its perfect. But then all of a sudden, there's a hiccup. There's a little porosity there. Uh, there's a little too much heat. Then he jumps around, there's not enough. You see? It's okay. It's okay to make those mistakes. They're, they're not truly mistakes. It You have to remember that oxyacetylene welding is the most artistic form of welding. Okay? Um, TIG is becoming really popular in, in home building. And there's nothing wrong with that. TIG is a, a, a great thing, you know. Um, I have a TIG machine, and uh, I do not use it for aircraft. I, I simply just love oxycetylene welding. I I throw on jazz. You know, I listen to, like, Billie Holiday, stuff from the 40s and 50s, and, and, and it's just soothing. I love I love that, that sound of that whisper that comes out of that oxycetylene torch. It's peaceful. It, I, I think it's really healthy on the soul just to sit back and take your time with a flame. And... Uh, you know, it's it's inexpensive to do it. Um, it's something that the average person can learn. It's something that you don't need to be afraid of. Okay, so I'm going to do a series of videos. We're going to start out with uh, talking about some of the equipment I use, and uh, we're just going to kind of take one piece at a time here, and see if we can't make some mistakes. And that way, we can all learn from it. Okay. Now, again. The, you know, th this guy did this day in and day out. It's not perfect, but it surely is a nice weld, right? And our goal is to see how good we can do. You know, 
this section that's welded here is really pretty, right? We're gonna we're gonna try to come up with that. We're gonna find out what makes that nice. What what makes this little hole here? What, why why didn't that penetrate, right? Why what what, what, what happened? Okay, we're gonna learn about that. And and so I'm just gonna try to cover some of these highlights. And by the time you're done piecing that together, I think you're gonna feel comfortable. And remember, some of the coolest airplanes on the planet are tube and fabric. Planes like the Whitman Tailwind and, and, and things like that. Um, you can build yourself a cub. This Legal Eagle is, I think, in my opinion, one of the safest and most structurally sound entry level and affordable means of getting into flight. And so we're going to focus on the Legal Eagle, but everything I talk about is for all forms of um, air, aircraft. You could build a Waco. You could get plans from the Smithsonian, build a 1929 Waco taper wing if you wanted to, using the same method we're going to talk about for the Legal Eagle. So we'll see you on the next one.